Welcome back, fifth video in this CAD from scratch series. At this point, I'm pretty, I don't know, stoked actually because we created a pretty cool bare minimum CAD tool so far. We can uh, generate and encode a polygonal mesh like this one. We can render it to the screen. We can rotate it in an ergonomic way, a user-friendly way, and we can export this to an SDL. So pretty much that covers all the the basics of what CAD has to do, right? Um, obviously, you might want the ability to draw a sketch and extrude and have boolean operations and lofts and fillets and stuff, and we'll get to all those things in time, but for the time being, this is actually enough, and I've done this kind of stuff for 10 years, or actually more than that, and I really enjoy generating parametric polygonal meshes for different parts. And I've done that for a lot of different things. And if you think back like 30, 40, 50 years, this is kind of how scientific computing was done in, um, in terms of like, you know, finite elements and uh, simulations and kinematics and stuff like that. This is the kind of models that were created. Nowadays, we just use CAD with our eyes closed. But this kind of these kind of algorithms that I'm going to talk about today are very important. So what I wanted to do today is to um, make a much more complicated model than this one on the left. I wanted to make a a clip like this, just to show that it is possible to make a, a, a functional CAD model without any tools, like completely from the the code side. So that's the plan. So here's the clip. Um, Basically, it'll have a few parameters. We'll have um, L, which will be the length of this flat section here, um, maybe from, from here to here. We'll have, what else? We'll have a thickness here. We'll, have, we'll call that we'll call that W, I guess, width. We'll have a depth. We'll call that thickness. We'll have a radius on these little front pieces here. We'll have a gap in here. We'll call that, I don't know, G. And what else do we need? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I guess we need um, a parameter on this, these curved parts. Obviously, in a polygonal mesh with polygons or an STL file, even, you can't have a curve. There's no such thing as a curve. So we'll have to encode these curves as a series of line segments, you know? And so I'll say that each, each of these arcs will have n line segments, n. So let's just jump right in and get started. At the bottom of our old code, I got to put this in sub files at some point. But for the time being, let's get rid of everything in our main. And let's make a new function, make clip. And we'll pass in some parameters to that in a second. So for this make clip function, we need to obviously give the parameters. Um, what kind of parameters do we need? Well, all, all these floats. So we'll say um, float T, float W, float, is it, let's do L first, float G, and then int N. That's six, right? Yeah. And let's just give some values to that before we forget. Let's see. Um, let's do, let's make it uh, half a unit. We'll, we'll do inches here. So 0.5 inches thick. We'll do 0 0.1. We'll make it one inch long. We may have to scale it up later, but that's the beauty of making a parametric model is that you can just change these parameters whenever you want. Uh, make the radius here, uh, 0 0.1. We'll make the gap really small, 25 thou. And we will, let's stick with um, 10 segments per curve for the time being. We can bump that up later. So now, like before, we need a couple of, um, we want to create, as, as before, we want to create a, f a float array of nodes, which is length num nodes, three. And we want to create a an int array of triangles, which is what we had before, length and then triangles uh, by three. So we need to define those two variables. 
So int num nodes equals something. And then int num triangles equals something. So what are those two things? Well, let's think, right? So the number of nodes will be governed primarily by n. In fact, exclusively by n. So um, let's say for, for this video, um, in terms of what I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show you how to do the outside of this model. So like this face, you know, this face. Not, I'm not going to do the front and the back. I'm not going to do this face and the face on the back. I'll do that myself and I'll show you the result. I don't want to waste too much time. Um, so to do the outside of this model, how many nodes will there be? Well, if this is going to be n segments, this will have uh, n plus one nodes. Obviously, I mean, if you have, you know, three segments, you have one, two, three, four nodes. So n plus one, and it's not going to be any nodes on the flat portions. But every curve will have n plus one. So we have one, two, three, four curves. So on one of these faces, on the front or the back, we will have on the boundary four times n plus one nodes total. And then if you count the front and the back, so the nodes here, as well as the nodes here, or I should say, you know, the nodes here and the nodes here, you will have uh, eight n plus one, right? Two times four is eight. So let's just say that for number of nodes equals eight times n plus one. Number of triangles, I think it's the same thing. And let me explain why that is. If you were to look at this from the, the top, right? So this, this face here, um, let me just draw it a little bit nicer head on. You'll have a bunch of nodes on, on this side here, right? Because that's where the curved surface is. You have a bunch of nodes here. We should have no nodes in the middle. And so this middle face will just be two triangles like this. Let me draw a straight line. And then all of these nodes between the front and the back will be connected like this. You'll have between each, you know, edge, you'll have two triangles. And so for that reason, I think it's going to be uh, the same number of nodes as triangles. Um, and another way of thinking about that is just that, you know, how many edges do you have on one surface? Well, you have n edges per curve and then one edge per flat. That's going to be, there's four curves, so 4n plus 4, and then there's two triangles per edge, so this is going to be times uh, 2. So again, we're in the same boat. The number of triangles is 8 times n plus 1. Now comes the interesting part. We have to make some other subfunctions, because I don't want to sit here all day coding this up manually. So we'll need a function that does, first thing, we need a function that makes a um, an arc in the x, y plane. So to put this perspective, I want to make, first things first, I want to draw one of these faces. So let me change my color really quick. I want to make this sort of set of nodes first. And what is this set of nodes? Well, this set of nodes is composed of an arc and then another arc, and then another arc, and then another arc, and then back. So really it's just four calls to a function that draws an arc. And we'll say that this plane here, this is the x, y plane. And we'll put the x, y, we'll put the origin of that right, right here. That should be an easy spot to put the origin. So x, y. Oh my God, this is impossible. X, y. So we need an arc in the xy plane. We also need a function that gives us an extrude, or maybe a close and extrude curve in the z direction. Basically, once we have, you know, our, our front face or our back face, uh, whatever, I want to be able to extrude it by de depth t. You didn't just copy and paste and then draw all the triangles between the, the two. So. That's going to be the second function here. So the first function is actually pretty simple. I guess we want to return um, 
the next index because we want to call this function a few times for three different arcs. So we'll say return the next index in node array. What does that mean? Well, uh, we will have to pass in the node array, obviously, because we're going to populate this node array with this function. So we'll pass in float nodes. Uh, this is just a, a you know a, a pointer here, but we we'll also need to pass in an index because obviously we want to be able to put in multiple sets of curves. So we have to know where in this array to, to put those. So we'll pass in an int start index. We will also need a bunch of parameters now. So um, to define an arc is quite a quite a bit to define an arc, right? Actually, let me get rid of all this. So an, an arc, let me change color again and go a little bit bigger. So an arc like this has a center, right? So it has X, Y, and Z. It also has a theta start. So if you if you count an angle, right? So angle starts at zero over here and then goes counterclockwise around. So it has a theta a theta start, so we'll say theta zero and a theta end, or theta one, I guess. Also has a radius, r. And what else does it have? Um, well, for our case, we're going to have um, a bunch of line segments, so we'll have n, like uh, increments around this arc, basically. So we'll pass in these values. So we'll say float x0, float y0, float z0, uh, float theta0, float theta1, float r, int, and yikes. OK. And actually, it's pretty simple, right? Once I give you these parameters, it's very easy. First thing you need when you have these parameters is you need to calculate the, the d theta, the theta between um, e each line segment, right? So we'll, we'll calculate that. So we'll say float d theta equals, obviously, just uh, theta 1 minus theta 0 divided by the n, uh, the n, which is, I guess we'll have to do float here. And now we just have to iterate through. This is pretty straightforward. We're going to iterate through um, n plus 1 nodes, put them into this nodes array, um, starting at the start index. So we'll say 4 int i equals 0, i less than equal to n, because it's n plus 1, i plus plus. And I guess because um, we want to return the next index, we will return start and we'll just increment that as we go so this is pretty straightforward um, obviously we're going to use trigonometry here so we need to define an angle so we'll say float angle equals what, theta 0 plus i times d theta right so however far we however far we are we'll just add that many d thetas and now we just literally populate the array so we'll say nodes start zero equals so what is the coordinate the x coordinate of of this first node here let me do another color this first node actually any node is just going to be x zero plus r times cosine of the angle right very simple then the y coordinate is just y zero plus r sine of the angle and then the z coordinate because we're just going to stay in the x y plane we're going to leave the z coordinate at our, our z zero value and that should work i guess we'll find out oh no sorry we have to increment starts right so we'll just increment starts at the last uh, last call of each loop so this this should give us uh, any given arc um, that we could ever imagine in the x y plane now we want to be able to extrude this so let me kill 
these really quick. So as an extrude, um, let's go from the top down view again. So this is, this is the top of the, the model looking down. Once we go through and we create all the arcs, right, of the front surface, call this the front and this the back. Once we create all the, the points on the front, we'll have nodes like here, 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 and here. And we'll need to extrude those, like literally copy and paste those nodes, literally just some distance t in the z direction, right? That's gonna be the first thing. And then in the same function, we're gonna to have to create all these triangles here. So all these triangles. So we'll basically, if this is gonna be, if this is gonna be node zero, and this is gonna be node one, and this is gonna be node you know, k, where k is the number of nodes on each face, front or back, and this is gonna be k plus one. Right, and we'll have to create some relationship to figure out how this connect. Does it go 0, 1, k plus 1? Does it go k, k plus 1, 0? We'll have to figure that out in this function. So we'll say int, what do we want to call this function? It, uh, extrude close curve. That sounds like, like a CAD, a closed curve. And this one, um, We'll have to pass in a couple things. We'll have to pass in obviously the, the nodes array because we're going to literally be copying and pasting nodes forward or backward in the z direction. We have to pass in the triangles array because we're going to be making a bunch of triangles right over here. So we'll say int triangles. We'll need to pass in the number of nodes, I guess k. So we'll just say um, int num nodes curve. I don't know. <laughs> curve and then the obviously the depth we'll say int depth or int t whatever you want to do now for this function um i think we need an, an, a, something to count but we'll do that later uh literally we're just going to iterate through these front nodes here from zero to k obviously this should not be k this should be uh k plus one if we're gonna use k, k plus one and k plus two. And this last one should be k. Obviously you have to go all the way around the model. You can't just go from the top to the left to right. You have to go from you know here all the way around, over and across and back. And so this would be zero and this would be k, right? Around the back, but still, that makes sense. So we're gonna iterate over the number of nodes in the curve. So we'll say four int i equals zero i less than num, what I call it, num nodes curve, is that right? Probably um, i plus plus. And in here, we're just gonna literally copy and paste things forward. So pretty much just what I just said. So zero is gonna become You know, just literally copying it forward that many points. And actually, if we're passing in the number of nodes, it, I think it will be k because we start at zero. So, yeah, this, this would actually be k minus one. It's right the first time. <laughs> Whatever, you get the point. So we'll say nodes num nodes curve plus i zero equals nodes i zero. Same thing for the y component and the z component. However, the z component, as we just said, we're extruding this, so we'll say plus the depth. The depth in the z direction. Now that will do the pretty much the easy part, which is just copying the front nodes to the back. Copying the front nodes to the back. Now we have to um, make the actual triangle connectivity. So the, the, the triangle array, so we'll say triangles of, okay, we have to have a counter here. So we'll say like that. So let's we'll define a counter. We'll start with the ith node. So what is the, what triangles involve the ith the ith node, so say it's zero. Well, we'll need probably uh, one, so we'll say triangles ct one. So 
I should refresh your memory, this triangles array enco encodes which nodes are in which triangle. So there's three components, zero, one, and two, and asks which nodes are in which triangle. Uh, so, yeah, Let me just click this more clear, this is K. Scuffed, scuffed video, K and K plus one. And so this triangle zero, you know, one, depending on how you want to draw it, will either attach with um, K or K plus one, or however you want to attach it. So let's say it starts with K. So our first triangle is zero, one, K. So we'll say, in this case, it's not just zero, it's I, right? It's I plus zero, I plus one, I plus K. So we'll say I, I plus one. I plus K, and then the the next triangle will be very similar. So it, this triangle here has zero, one, and K. The next triangle has one, K plus one, and K. All right? Or you guess you could even start with whatever you, whatever you want. So let's just say. Um, the first one is, I don't know, uh, I plus K. Also, we didn't define K. Um, it's actually num nodes curve. Num nodes, it's such a scuff video. <laughs> I think, think I there's no audience. So. Num nodes curve plus, uh, plus one. Yeah, that makes sense. Obviously, we have to increment these counters um, for each triangle. So we're adding two triangles per node. So we'll, this will be what we do. And then the thing is, this will work for everything except, let's return uh, CT while we're at it. Um, this will not work for the very last one. So as I said, if this is going to be zero and this is going to be K minus one, this, you know, equivalency, you know, this relationship is not going to make sense for the last couple of nodes. So the last node, let's, let's talk, think about this really quick. Um, the last tr two triangles, so we have CT minus two and um, triangles CT minus one will have to be changed slightly. Let's think about this. The ith one, I plus one, will have to be zero. Uh, this one will have to be zero. You have to take my word for this. Uh, hard to explain these things visually. You kind of have to just imagine going forward all the way around to this point. And then the second one, as opposed to being I num nodes curve, it will be uh, I num curve plus one, it will be uh, num nodes curve, I guess. Right, is that right? That seems right to me. Dynasty Yeah, that seems right to me. So we're replacing those two. Okay, that's fine. We'll see if that works or not, I don't know. Maybe we'll get lucky. Now, um, let's actually call these functions in our, our make clip routine. So this is actually going to be really easy. Let's define some some counters. C, C T, both zero. Um, and now we're just going to say uh, C equals what's it called? Um, arc node or node arc? Node arc. We're going to pass in those parameters. Um, let's just copy it down so I put them in the right spot. Okay, I think I got it actually. So it's um, nodes, C. Now here comes the tough part. Uh, how do you want to count around this geometry? Let me kill all this garbage. Let's start this model. Um, 
there's the, the origin. Let's start it right here. So the first, what's the first one we have to fill in? We have to fill in the x0, y0, z0, so it's going to be zero. I'll fill these in and I'll get back. This will take me a few minutes to fill these in. Okay, I put in all these node arc functions with the, with the values of the parameters which would uh, correspond to this kind of a traversal of the outside of the model. You know, I hope they're all right. Then I went ahead and I extruded it with the parameter we just talked about. And then I put together this like look, look at, look from like we had before, a file name, write STL, and then a, a draw function here. So this is just what we had below here before. I just remade it up here on top. And I did find a mistake, I think. Um, yeah, over here, the, the variable called start should be you know, not plural. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see that actually worked. You can see we have a clip from some random perspective. I'm not sure what number I put in, some random perspective. But it looks like for some reason it has no depth. Hmm, let me take a look about why that would be. Okay, I found what it was. Uh, in our extrude closed curve, I put an int for the depth. Obviously, it's a float, not, a, not an int, so that didn't work. But, uh, but yeah, so now if I make and I compile, or sorry, I compile and then I run. Look what we have, dude, look at this. We have a clip. This is the clip we just talked about. We made this thing parametrically and it looks pretty sweet if you ask me. So that's that, but let me let me quickly code up the faces thing, the front and the back face, because right now this is not an STL, it'll have a, you know an opening on the front and the back. There's, there's no triangles here, so. Let me code those up. I'll be back in a few minutes. And uh, yeah, we'll see how, how it looks. Okay, it's been like probably 10 minutes or so. And I put in a bunch more uh, more stuff to handle the front faces. Uh, yeah, also I had to change the number of nodes and triangles obviously to account for the front face. I won't get into that. If you care about the code, it's in the description. You can take a look yourself. And. Uh, this should work. I did check it, so if it doesn't work now, that that would be surprising. Yeah. So here is our here's our clip model with a front and a back face. It was kind of like Santa's sleigh, you know. I don't know. It reminds me of like Santa Claus sleigh, with this kind of front piece. But yeah, you can see we got nice triangles on the front face, on the top, on the the side. It looks nice. Look look over here. Look where this part is. Look at that. Doesn't that look sweet to you. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me um, let me change that n parameter from what do we have? Ten. What do you think? Fifty. Let's do fifty. Oof! Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Now that looks nice. We made this. We made. Look at this, dude. We made this. That's pretty sweet. And actually, let's just check. We have an STL file that's 40K. Let's see if this works. Oop, there it is. So you don't believe me it's a real STL? There it is, there's your real STL file of that clip. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Obviously, this is not the easiest way. This probably took me like an hour to record this video. Um, so it, definitely not the easiest way to go about like making a geometry. This is just, in FreeCAD, this would be so easy. You just make a sketch with some constraints, extrude this, it'd take you two minutes. But, you know, from scratch, things are a lot harder. But in the next few videos, we'll work on ways that we can kind of zoom out from this nitty gritty polygonal mesh stuff to more user-friendly, like, you know, CSG and other, other algorithms that you might want to use to make, uh, make geometries. So that's the plan. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.